Hello, my name is Zico from Alibaba Group. I'm going to present Chita, a secure two-party deep neural network inference framework. This talk is organized into four parts, a background introduction, two technical sections for linear and nonlinear primitives, and finally a performance discussion and summary. The, talk, the task that we intend to solve throughout the whole talk is secure neural network inference. A three-layer neural network might be sufficient to classify the MNIST dataset, but for complex images like ImageNet, a complex model is needed, such as a residual network model with 50 layers. The prior best work to perform secure two-party inference on ResNet 50 model is CryptoFlow 2, published in CCS two years ago. The performance in their work is about 10 minutes for one image inference in a LAN setting, but this goes up to 20 minutes in a worst network environment. We are going to investigate whether we can do better and boost the performance to the next level. There are many primitives that we can leverage to design a two-party computation framework. The philosophy in Chita is to optimize the trade-offs among different primitives and then adapt our implementation details to concrete application case. This is the protocol architecture in Chita. It is mainly separated into two parts. The linear computations such as fully connected layers and convolution layers can be broken down into inner products of vectors, which is implemented with CUPFV in a highly optimized manner. The other nonlinear computations such as sigmoid, ReLU, and max pooling are decomposed all the way down to oblivious transfer, which is implemented with the recent silent OT protocols. Just a brief recap, our system works in the world of additive secret sharing. Now let's first discuss how linear primitives can be implemented in an efficient way. Matrix multiplication is composed of, man, of many inner products. Suppose each of the two parties has a vector. A simple way to implement inner product is that Bob sends is homomorphically encrypted vector to Alice, who performs the multiplication, mask the result, and send back the result to Bob. Most existing frameworks that use homomorphic encryption to implement matrix multiplication fall into this area. But devil is in the detail. The way how we implement this process is the key to achieve high performance. In the BFB homomorphic encryption scheme, the plain test space is a polynomial ring. All polynomials have a degree of at most n minus one, and each coefficient is an integer between zero and t. Therefore, the computation also happens in the polynomial space. This is a very simple example of polynomial multiplication modulo s squared plus one. But we have to solve a problem, how to encode the data into a plain test polynomial. Most two PC computation systems such as Gazelle, Delphi, and CryptFlow2 use a technique called CRT batching. Due to limited time, I'm not going to uh, introduce the details of this technique, but the idea is that a vector of integer values can be packed into a polynomial. And most importantly, it provides the effect of single instruction on multiple data especially for multiplication. If we multiply two polynomials in this encoding, it is equivalent to perform an integer multiplication at the same time. For this packing technique to work, there is a precondition that the plain test modulus T has to be a prime. And it turns out that this requirement has a negative impact on the performance of secret sharing with more than 50% uh, percent overhead uh, according to the analysis of CryptoFlow 2. Now let's see how to implement the inner product with uh, homomorphic encryption. The first idea is to use a uh, simple packing as we introduced before. But as we said, simple packing enables uh, element-wise multiplication between two vectors. What we want is inner product. So we have to aggregate element-wise result, which requires rotating the vector multiple times. This is a very expensive operation. Most previous works use this method to implement inner product. The second idea is to simply encode the vector into the coefficients of the polynomial. Well, this is a very simple try, but it works like a charm. The solution is elegant for inner product, inner product because only one homomorphic multiplication is enough, and there is no expensive homomorphic rotation. Now we can see how to implement the 2D convolution with this elegant idea. Suppose we have two matrices A and B. A could be, for example, an image, and B is the convolution kernel. If we perform the convolution in this example, the result is a 2 times 3 matrix for a stride equals to 1. If the stride is 2, the result is a 1 times 2 matrix. This is just a very high level abstract about convolution. 
In Chita, how to encode this matrix is the crucial point. For matrix A, the encoding is relatively easy. We will just lay out elements in this matrix and put them into the polynomial coefficients row after row. But for the kernel matrix B, it demands a little more thinking. Of course, we still put the elements into the polynomial coefficients, but in a very different and metric order, like this example. We found that if we encode the two matrices in this way, and then we multiply the two polynomials, the resulting polynomial C, we already have the convolution result already encoded somewhere in the coefficients. In this case, these six coefficients encode the two times three matrix uh, result matrix of the convolution. And that's it. The first big contribution in Chita is about designing efficient encodings according to matrix multiplication dimensions in the convolution and uh, fully connected layers. We also found that this method is generalizable to handle all cases in neural network inference for any stride, any padding methods for 2D and 3D convolutions. And also for big tensors, I will skip the following slides uh, about big tensors, but the philosophy is similar to what I have just described. So I will skip uh, this uh, slide about um, handling the big tensors. For the nonlinear primitives, it relies heavily on oblivious transfer where a sender has some messages that a receiver can choose from, but without revealing its choice. A fundamental building block in the nonlinear layers is the comparison operation. One solution for comparison is to use a Boolean adder between the two parties. And then we just take out the MSP of the, adding, of the addition result. But in Crypto2, the authors propose a more efficient way. The idea is to use a comparison tree. If we compare two numbers X and Y located in different parties, we can recursively break each value into two halves, compare each half, and then aggregate the result. Finally, this would lead to one bit comparison in the leaves of the tree. Cryptflow Crypt 2 takes one step further and end the tree travels in four bit blocks. For example, we start going too deep into the tree. And this turns out to be more efficient if we implement the four bit uh, block comp comparison with one of 16 OT. This minimizes both the communication routes and the end gates. We further optimize the performance by using recent progress in oblivious transfer, where a series of silent OT schemes based on VOLE have been proposed. These OT schemes can generate massive amount of random correlated OT with little communication. This is very different from the classic IKMP OT. This gives us an opportunity to explore the protocol design in a more efficient way. For example, in a comparison tree, we need to use one of 16 OT, where uh, and CryptoFlow 2 use KKOT that was proposed uh, specifically for IKMP OT in 2013. But in the world of silent OT, we found that using a, pro a proposal more than 20 years ago gives a better performance. This table compares the overhead of OT primitives between Crypto2 and our, our Chita. The major difference is that the security parameter lambda no longer affects the communication overhead. And this is a non-trivial reduction because lambda is generally larger than 128. Truncation is also a very heavy uh, operation in multi-party computation on fixed point numbers. We propose a more efficient truncation protocol based on silent OT, but there could be a tiny uh, one bit error in the LSD. This error does not affect the neural network inference result as we have verified in the paper. In the end, let's briefly conclude with, with the performance of Chita. In general, the whole system computation performance is boosted by three times with only one tenth of combination overhead compared to previous work. To summarize, with IOW homomorphic encryption and silent OT, two PC computation systems can be implemented in very efficient ways. The most optimized design need to take multiple factors into account, such as the computation task, the primitives, and the parameters. Our system is open source on GitHub and welcome to give it a try. Thanks.